Well, at the last EHA meeting, we saw a multinational study which included centers from the United States as well as uh, from Europe, actually band together to answer this very important question. This has never been looked at in a prospective way, so the best we could do is to do a large retrospective study across multiple institutions to fare actually how patients did with these two modalities of therapy. What we learned is that you know there were deeper responses associated with the use of bendamustine rituximab, but overall the patients actually did the same. There was no difference in progression-free survival or overall survival, despite the fact that the median follow-up was uh, just over four years' time. What that really tells us is both of these represent, you know, good modalities for the treatment of patients. But I think what's important is, you know, what do you do for a particular patient? Do you expose a younger patient to an alkylator? Probably not, in which case a BTK inhibitor you know, might be favored. On the other hand, there are patients where you know, fixed duration therapy may be more appropriate. But once again, it does highlight you know, the responsibility of an individual you know, uh, in caring for somebody with Waldenstrom's to really be you know, more and more aware of the particular issues surrounding that patient and the optimal care pattern that one has to assume.